Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited about today's video because I get to talk about Disney World. It's my favorite thing to talk about and as I'm sure the reason that you clicked on this video is we're going to be talking about Animal Kingdom. I love Animal Kingdom. It is such a unique park. It's so different than the other Disney parks. It is so... I don't know what the word is, but you just... You get so many different experiences there. You learn about so many cultures and, um, I don't know. It's just really cool. It's like a zoo packed into like an amusement park, packed into like Broadway sh style shows. It's just, it's amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and start off this video just by saying that I do have an Animal Kingdom video that I recorded in 2016, about a year ago. I'm going to link that for you guys down below just in case you're interested, but this video is going to have some updated information for 2017 and beyond. And this one's also going to talk a lot more about things to do with kids and what I would recommend to do with kids because when I filmed the Animal Kingdom video last year, I had never taken a child to Disney. So this past January, just a few months ago, we did take our three-year-old niece to Disney with us. So it was an entirely new experience. I have a lot of things to recommend for you guys. And I do have some notes here. So if you guys see me, you know, kind of looking down or referring to my notes, I want to stay on par and on point with all of this useful information because I will start rambling if I don't keep myself on task. So if you guys are excited to hear about what's new in Animal Kingdom and hear all of my recommendations, then just keep watching. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to address is dining. I'm just going to talk about food for a minute because I don't have a ton of recommendations, but there are some things that I wanted to share. So as far as um, like a quick service, if you guys have the quick service dining plan, I recommend that you go to Flame Tree Barbecue. It is delicious. You get huge servings. It works with the quick service dining plan. You get a drink. Um, they have pulled pork sandwiches, they have ribs, they have chicken, it's just, it's amazing, it's so good, it's the best barbecue ever, and so good, and even if you don't have the dining plan, you still get a lot of food for your money, my husband and I, when we went in 2016, we did not have the dining plan, and we still ate there, we were able to share a meal, delicious, um, if you guys have more picky eaters, they, um, they have like, pulled pork like without sauce on it and stuff so just depending on your kids and your their tastes my niece loved everything she is such a like condiment girl like you could give that child ketchup barbecue sauce ranch you can give her anything and she's good with it so if your kids are into that kind of stuff they're gonna like it um but as far as like desserts and stuff we did eat uh what was it called Dino Bite Snacks. It's over in Dino Land USA and they have all kinds of delicious like ice cream treats and stuff. We got um, like a ice cream sandwich that was the chocolate chip cookies were huge. Um, and I believe they have like hot fudge sundaes and stuff too. So if you guys are looking for more like treats, that is an option. There's also a Rainforest Cafe right inside the park. So if your kids wanted that experience, you could do that. And then um, I do want to mention the table service restaurant or one of them that they have there is called Yak and Yeti. And I've heard really, really good things about that. So if you guys are interested in a more gourmet, a little more expensive meal that does require a reservation, Yak and Yeti is there. I need... And as of like right now, it's it's mid March 2017. As of right now, they're doing reservations for the Rivers of Light uh, dining experience. So I'm not really sure where you sit and eat for that, but you can view the Rivers of Light show that happens in the evening at Animal Kingdom while you're eating your dinner. So I did just want to go ahead and throw those in there. I've never done either of those experiences, but I know that they're available. I've heard really good things about them. So there you go. So let's talk about rides and attractions because there's quite a few things to talk about. Um, obviously, if you were going to Animal Kingdom and you're staying on the property, you will have access to Fast Passes 60 days before your trip begins. And if you are not staying on property, you have access to Fast Passes 30 days before your trip or the day that you're going to be there. So I'll just go ahead and give you guys some recommendations for Fast Passes, lines that get pretty long. The number one thing that I think you absolutely have to do with children of any age is Kilimanjaro Safaris. You literally ride in a bus, van, truck, whatever you want to call it, through like the jungle. You are so close to the wildlife. 
it is amazing. There are lions, there are elephants, there are flamingos and zebras and um, giraffes and all of these amazing animals. And the tour guide that drives you around is so full of information. You can ask them all kinds of questions. You get to see so many things. They tell you about all of the rescue and preserves that Disney is doing for all these animals. And the ride itself is like 30 minutes. I mean, it's like, it's extensive. It is awesome. So definitely anybody young, old, or otherwise, I recommend that you do the Kilimanjaro Safari and get a fast pass for it because it does fill up really quickly. So that is definitely my number one recommendation. Another one, if you have older children, would be Expedition Everest, the roller coaster. It is, it is without a doubt my favorite ride in all of Disney. Like, it, all four parks, Expedition Everest is it for me. You are riding a roller coaster that goes inside, outside, forwards, backwards. You're running from the Abominable Snowman and... It's amazing, but I think you have to be 48 inches to ride it. So if you have littler kids, that's not something that's going to be uh, possible for you to take them on. But you guys could, if you know, if you and your spouse are going, you could exercise the rider switch where one of you rode it alone and then you switched off while another one stayed, well, one of you stayed with your child slash children, whatever. So that could be an option if you guys, you know, just really wanted to ride that or perhaps you're taking like a grandma or a family member that you could leave the kids with and the adults could go ride. Um, don't miss it. If you at all can ride it, don't miss it, but don't leave your kids. That's not what I'm saying, but another ride is the dinosaur ride. You get um, in this like truck type thing and you're supposed to be going like back in time to pick up a dinosaur and it's very 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 dark in there and it's kind of a bumpy jerky ride it's supposed to feel like you know you're driving through uneven terrain the dinosaurs are very close they're very I mean they're scary honestly they are my niece is three years old she's actually three and a half and she dinosaurs are her favorite thing she loves them but that ride freaked her out sufficiently. So keep in mind about what your kids are afraid of. You don't want to, you know, traumatize them on the dinosaur ride, but you only have to be 40 inches to ride it. So it, it, it opens up an option for a lot of kids. So there is that. And then another one is Cali River Rapids. Uh, I believe it's only 40 inches for that one too. It's a like boat tube family type water ride it's you know you ride in like the circular thing and you go through all the water and everything so it's definitely a water ride i would not recommend riding it if it's chilly <laughs> whenever you guys go but it well, i mean really when's it chilly in florida not very often so there is that one if you guys are interested in riding like a water ride um and then you can also use your fast pass on the primaveral whirl which is a it's in dinoland usa it's just a little um I don't really know how to describe it. It's just a fun little ride, but you have to be, I believe, 42 or 48 inches. My niece couldn't ride it, and she really wanted to. So uh, there is that one. And then there's, you know, there's just little kid rides. There's the Triceratops Spin, I believe is what it's called. And it's basically just Dumbo with Triceratops. My niece and I rode it twice. She loved it. So they do have that available for, you know, little ones who might not like the bigger rides. And so... Um, I think that's all of the rides that I have to talk about. So as far as fast passing the shows, we'll go ahead and talk about entertainment and shows. You definitely can use a fast pass to get a better seat for a show, depending on if you guys go like in the summer when it's more busy, you might want to use a fast pass for either like Festival of the Lion King or the Finding Nemo musical, just to ensure that you guys get a good spot. Um, but honestly, I... I don't know that that's exactly necessary. Like, like I said, if you have really little kids and they can't ride very many things, I would do it just to ensure that you guys get a good seat. So let's talk about the entertainment. You have Finding Nemo the Musical, which is essentially just the movie Finding Nemo being acted out in kind of a mixture of like musical and like just dialogue. Um, and it's like kind of black light with puppets these huge beautiful puppets like Nemo, Marlon, Dory like all of the characters that you guys know and love um it's really cool there's a lot of like different songs and stuff that really bring the 
movie to life. They do bubbles. Bubbles fall from the ceiling and stuff. So my niece adored it. She loves Finding Nemo. She loved it. She thought it was great. I saw a lot of kids in there that was really enjoying it. So I think that's good for anybody, any age. You know, obviously there's nothing really scary about it. Um, then you have It's Tough to Be a Bug. And this is a 3D little show that is actually inside the tree of life and don't count on getting any cell phone service in there um, but that's beside the point so what happens on it's tough to be a bug my little assistant needed to get up here with me is you basically are being hosted by flick from it from a bug's life and it just shows you you know all the reasons that it's tough to be various kinds of bugs so if your kids are freaked out by 3D, um, if your kids are freaked out by bugs in any kind of way, I would not take them in there. My niece got pretty freaked out. There are, um, you know, some pretty intense stuff. Like, with it being 3D, it feels like the butterflies are right here, you know, and the bumblebees, and there are some spiders in the ceiling. So if your kids are going to get freaked out by bugs or by 3D or by all of it, just skip it because my niece had to be taken out. So... As far as adults go, though, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. Um, and older kids would probably enjoy it. So there is that. And then we have the Festival of the Lion King. So this is the one that is, like, Broadway quality. Like, it's amazing. I personally am not a huge fan of the Lion King, the movie itself. Um, it's a long story. If you know me, you probably already know it. But not a huge fan, just for certain reasons. And, but this show, like you guys it is it's awesome there are acrobats there are dancers they sing all of the songs that you know and love from the lion king they have floats where um, simba and Timon and pumbaa are out and there are just the decorations are beautiful it, the crowd it's very interactive with the crowd and it is it's amazing it's do not miss it like do not miss it it is so awesome Kids of all ages, I think, would like it. It's not really scary or anything. There's not any um, really, like, scary moments. My niece loved it, and she was singing along, and there was a lot of kids who were singing along. So it's awesome. Don't miss it. And like I said, that's one of the ones that you could use a fast pass for if you're wanting to get, like, really good seating. But they do have multiple shows a day, so I wouldn't really be concerned about it unless you're there on, like, a super busy day, like a holiday or in the summer or something like that. Um, then you also have Flights of Wonder, which is a bird show. We, unfortunately, have been to Animal Kingdom twice now as adults and have yet to catch Flights of Wonder. But um, this past time we didn't do it because my sister-in-law is afraid of birds. Long story. But I think it looks really cool. They have all kinds of birds who do all kinds of like tricks and stuff and they tell you about it. So catch that if you're into birds. They also have like a street dance. Um, towards the end of the park closing, they have a street dance in the Africa portion, which is a lot of fun. We did um, really enjoy that. And then they do bring the Tree of Life alive now. Um, it's awesome. It, it transforms the Tree of Life in a way with, you know, uh, like strobing lights and like projections and stuff. And it is, it's beautiful. I definitely wouldn't miss that. I believe they only do it once per night. So check your you know, like Times Guide or Ask a Cast Member or something, what well, that's going to be happening so you don't miss that. And then you also have the brand new Rivers of Light show, which they do on like a lake. Um, it is something that I unfortunately have not had the pleasure of seeing because they didn't open it until like a month and a half after we were visiting. But there's like an amphitheater that's around the lake and from what I understand there's a lot of really cool things that go on during the show. Um, I don't believe there are any fireworks just for the sake of the animals but they do, I know like a lot of lights and it may even be like a water show. So check that out definitely. Um, if you guys have seen it let me know in the comments if it's really as awesome as everybody says. So um, let's talk, let's talk about the world of Avatar because Right now, Animal Kingdom is under major construction. They are building the world of Avatar, um, James Cameron's movie about the people that are blue. I personally have never seen the movie. I know. I hear everybody going, what? Because it's such a phenomenon. But I personally have never seen it. Um, I do believe that I am going to watch it before we return to Animal Kingdom because they are opening an entire new expansion of the park for the world of Avatar. So... I did some research, and according to the Disney website, they are opening three attractions in the Avatar uh, 
section. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure the one that is called Avatar's Flight of Passage is probably a ride, but I'm not sure how many of these are rides or shows. But according to Disney.com, on May 27, 2017, you will be able to experience Avatar Flight of Passage, the Valley of Moara, and then the Navi River Journey. So I don't, that sounds like a ride too. So I'm not really sure what those are, but, um, am I going to sneeze? <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, so yeah, May 27th, 2017, obviously the opening dates are subject to change just because of, you know, construction and whatnot, but that is the tentative date for this to open right now. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to go back and, um, you know, experience it. If you guys are big fans of Avatar, I think that you will really enjoy it. We were able to see a little bit of the construction going on when we were there, and it looks cool. Um, which, I mean, really, <laughs> everything at Disney is cool. They don't do anything halfway. So there is um, a little bit of information about that. And I think to close out this video that we will just go ahead and talk about a couple of things uh, that are kind of just, like, fun. Uh, you can visit Rafiki's Planet Island or something like that. Rafiki's Planet something or other. You just get on a little train and it takes you to another part of the park. I myself, not a fan because Rafiki and I, we don't get along. But for anybody um, who has kids who's interested in like science and, you know, learning about animals, learning about um, nature and, you know, taking care of all of that stuff, I think that you guys, Planet Watch, that's what it's called, Rafiki's Planet Watch. So I've only been over there once. We actually didn't make it over there this past trip with my niece, but it's a cool little place and you can meet Chip and Dale over there. So you can also meet Rafiki. That floats your boat, but not for me. So that was fun. And then they also have a couple of trails that you guys can walk on and check out. Um, I believe one of them is elephants or rhinos. Although the other one is gorillas. No, thank you. Um, but if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, you can do that. Oh, excuse me. Gosh, allergy season. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the characters that you guys can meet. Um, new for 2017, you can now meet Doc McStuffins in Animal Kingdom. So that's exciting. Previously, the only place that you could meet her was in Hollywood Studios. So it's exciting that now you have that location as well. If you have little ones that are into Doc McStuffins. Um, you could meet Baloo and King Louie from the Jungle Book, which my niece was thrilled about. They are there quite a bit uh, during the day, so that's fun. You could also meet Flick from A Bug's Life, so that's cool. Um, you could meet Goofy and Pluto over at Dino Land USA. You could meet Mickey and Minnie. Um, I can't remember what that building is called, but it'll be on the uh, My Disney Experience app. You could find out times and locations and everything to work to where to meet all these characters. You could also meet Donald. He's over in Dino Land USA a few times a day. Um, you could meet Russell from Up. Uh, the website was only listing Russell, but my husband and I met Russell and Doug, the dog, from Up last year. So I don't know if Doug is no longer available to meet or maybe he just wasn't when I was doing my research. Um, you could meet Tarzan and you could also meet Pocahontas. And my niece, Pocahontas was one of my favorite encounters with my niece. She was so funny with her. She was so sweet and she's very authentic. She's great. Disney doesn't, you know, like I said, they don't do anything halfway. They give you the full experience. So, um, there's a lot of character, you know, options, character meet and greets and stuff that are really cool. If your kids are kind of leery or wary about costumed characters, you do have, you know, Pocahontas and Tarzan, the... The live action um, actual people that you're speaking to so I think that any kid would be interested in meeting them and um, as far as like things for like littler ones to do they do have some games over in Dino Land USA um, they have like a this thing with like fossils in it where they'll talk to your kids about like you know dinosaur bones and then they do also have this huge play area called the bone yard where your kids can dig in the sand for dino bones. They have slides. They have uh, like little caves and little obstacle courses and stuff where you can play. And the floor is like really soft. And so, you know, if your kid wipes out, they're not going to get crazy hurt or anything like that. It's totally based on four kids. And my niece spent 
a good hour and she could have stayed there longer. So it's a lot of fun. I may have went down a few of the slides myself. So definitely a good place if, you know, mom and dad need a break or you have a baby that needs a break. Just let the kids run wild. You can see them everywhere and it's, it's cool. It's really, really cool. So I think that's all I have to talk about. If I missed anything, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to leave them down below in the description, in the description, in the comments. I will leave a link in the description for Animal Kingdom so that you guys can check it out for yourself. Go see what other people are talking about. Um, and if you have any stories to tell me about your time at Animal Kingdom, what's your favorite ride? What's your favorite restaurant? What should I do the next time I'm there? Hit a girl up. I love talking about Disney. I will become your best friend in like two minutes if you can have a knowledgeable discussion with me about Disney World. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you want more Disney related videos. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time. Bye guys.